Welcome to RCR Wireless News. I'm Martha DeGrasse and I'm here with Jamie Smith. He is Director of Embedded Systems at National Instruments. Jamie, thanks so much for inviting us here today. Yeah, thanks for having me on your uh, show. Well, you had us. We're here at the Industrial IoT la launch. Um, you've launched a, a lab here with a lot of industry partners. And I think it's amazing how many companies have come to Austin today to be part of this. Mm -hmm. um, we got to talk to a few of them, but um, I, I wanted to sort of start off by understanding or helping our audience understand what the Industrial IoT Lab is, and then we can talk about some of the specific sponsor partners that you've got here. That sounds great. So over the last several years, distributed measurement and control systems have gotten increasingly complex, and the demands on these systems have escalated dramatically. And we've come to the realization that not one company can serve all the needs of the industrial internet of things. So many companies are coming together to form test beds to validate that an end-to-end -end solution is complete and can solve a real business challenge out on the factory floor or at the power plant or maybe in a mobile fleet. And so the lab is a physical representation of those test beds. It's a working lab where we can go in and solve the next problem that's in front of us, but it's also a showpiece where we can uh, demonstrate the capabilities of these end-to-end -end solutions and how they can address a company's problem. Great. Some of the companies that, that we talk to quite frequently are here today, so I'd like to talk a little bit about some of those. Cisco is one of your partners. Can you share a little bit of information about how you're working with Cisco? Absolutely. So, of course, Cisco is a, a leader in information technology infrastructure, and there, as you get into the Internet of Things, everything is distributed, everything's on the network, so they're a critical collaborator. So many of the systems we're putting together, whether it's microgrid automation, our advances in the smart grid, or our distributed systems doing predictive maintenance, the network equipment is absolutely required. But one thing we're doing that's brand new and cutting edge is we're working on a new networking standard together. Time-sensitive networking is a new standard that's coming out of the IEEE committees. And in cooperation with an organization, Avenu, we're actually building a new network stack that can uh, truly converge operational technology uh, networks, like OT networks, along with informational technology networks, like IT networks. And the capabilities that are being added is the ability to synchronize and control devices on a standard Ethernet network which is required for these industrial applications but still have the high security and the high data movement that we enjoy in our homes or in our offices as we move files around in multimedia. Right, and we, we saw some of that standardization over Ethernet in the lab, particularly as it um, relates to, to time management and having a common reference for, the, for time. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So the uh, new time-sensitive networking technology uh, we actually have a test bit in the lab where there's many suppliers that have brought equipment that already supports this emerging standard. Mm -hmm. It's approximately a dozen or so. And on the network, we can synchronize those devices. We're getting synchronization to around 150 nanoseconds. So 0 0.15 millionth of a second. That's the level of synchronization we're able to achieve on this network. It's incredible synchronization. And then once you have synchronization, you can then precisely time when a packet leaves a device to go to another device. If you know when it left and you know when it's supposed to get there, you can make sure that it goes through cleanly through the network and arrives on time. Not late, not early, but on time. And so if we are able to uh, complete this technology, get all these vendors with release quality uh, hardware, we'll be able to do some amazing things in these industrial internet applications. Absolutely. Hewlett Packard, another company that's here. Can you talk about Hewlett Packard's participation a little mm -hmm. bit? Absolutely. So Hewlett Packard is, of course, a, uh, an industry giant in enterprise infrastructure equipment as well. You know, it's computation and storage and networking equipment. Uh, they are doing some very revolutionary things by taking the on-premise server technology and pushing it out to the factory floor. Their edge line technology brings uh, many cores of processing and super high-end server quality compute right into the machine, into the factory, right where the sensor data is coming in. 
So if you want to do artificial intelligence, machine learning, advanced analytics, you don't need to push it back to a data center. You don't need to push it to the cloud. You actually can have elements of that data center right there at your uh, machine or on your factory floor. And so at, with the HPE uh, technology, we're running uh, many elements of the PTC stack. So their ThingWorks capability, as well as the engine that's required to do their augmented reality, are being run on the HPE equipment, and then we can try out different approaches to help the way technicians would repair a piece of equipment, or the type of learning about a piece of equipment to ensure that we can maintain its uptime. Excellent. Now your platforms obviously go all the way down to the silicon and Intel, I didn't see Intel here, but I saw their names as a sponsor. Mm -hmm. Are, is there a participation, I know they're here in Austin as well, so what exactly is the nature of their participation in this lab, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So Intel, of course, is the leader in processing technology. Uh, they, for many, many years, have, have uh, been inside our laptops and workstations, and they're increasingly involved in industrial applications and embedded applications. Uh, and over the past uh, decade plus, we've been working closely with Intel, and they are a key sponsor of the lab. And where they reside is they reside right there at the edge, where the sensors are coming in. We're using uh, converter technology from a company like Analog Devices to bring sensor data in, and then we're processing that data using Intel processors and mechanical, industrial packaging, but then also, of course, Intel's processing is happening on on-premise servers and in data centers, whether they're on a particular company's campus or in the cloud. So Intel's technology covers the entire stack. Now, Intel has also been a leader on this time-sensitive network effort as well. The chairman of AVNU, which is the interop committee for time-sensitive networking, is actually an Intel employee. Mm -hmm. And they have helped us, and we've worked together on open source software stack to help enable the adoption of time-sensitive networking. Uh, and that's just one example. Other examples is Intel is playing a role in security. Right, security is paramount in these systems. These systems aren't secure, then we're we're in trouble. So uh, there's activity and discussions that are going on within the IIC with m members of Intel as well, where we're addressing some of the security challenges. So Intel is all over the industrial Internet of Things. Oh, great. Well, we saw applications in several different verticals in the lab, uh, factory automation, energy, and we heard about autonomous cars. What do you see as perhaps the, the most challenging vertical right now? I think the coolest vertical, start with that one, is the connected car. Yeah, that's right? That is the ultimate in technology convergence. You have uh, electrical motors and electrical storage uh, combined with the mechanical system. You have all the capabilities of a smartphone integrated into the car. You have processors all over the place. And then you're connecting to back-end systems to do advanced learning so we can actually learn how to drive these cars autonomously to get from A to B safely. It is the ultimate in technology convergence. So I think if we just look at challenges in terms of count of challenges, the connected car's got to be it. Now I think the, uh, the media challenge, which has the uh, ability to have the most business impact right now, is in the area of condition monitoring and predictive maintenance of heavy industrial equipment. Yeah. Uh, so we're doing a lot of work at bringing in sensor data, extracting the key features around those sensors, and then moving it into advanced machine learning algorithms and building these models that will not only detect anomalies that something's about to go down, but then predict when in the future there'll be a problem. So, you know, power plants going down or equipment within a, a plant or facility failing may become a thing of the past. So that's maybe one of the most exciting areas right now. Yeah, I was speaking with, with RTI before this about the impact that renewables are having on the grid and the fact that they're not quite connected to the point where they can be fully reliable yet, but you're working on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another uh, key testbed within the Industrial Internet of Things lab that we just opened is the ability to work on microgrids and uh, connected inverters. So if we look at the way renewables are brought onto the grid, they actually generate their uh, voltage data through an AC signal that may not be synchronized with the grid that gets wired up into our homes. And that synchronization has to happen. 
Well, the way that is done today is we have a very strong AC signal that's coming from big uh, natural gas generation turbines. Those things rotate at a particular frequency, and that is what's generating the power, that AC power that's all over our grids. As we move to renewables like solar or wind, they don't have that reliable AC signal, so they can't synchronize with one another. So the only way to bring renewables on the grid is if there is this reference to synchronize to, and 60% or more of the energy on the grid has to come from traditional sources that have this rigid AC signal. So to go to renewables greater than 40%, we need to come up with a different synchronization approach for these systems. And so we're using that same time-sensitive time sensitive networking technology to synchronize these converters on the grid they can be used across wind farms, solar farms, charging stations, our homes to make sure that AC grid stays synchronized and we can watch renewable penetration go up to maybe 100%. Very exciting. All right, Jamie Smith, Director of Embedded Systems at National Instruments. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming.